This may be one of the toughest videos I ever record, but by the end of it, we'll know what Yang really is and explore it. Let's go. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time visiting and you're interested in growing your IT career or your IT skills, you're in the right place. Just make sure you hit that subscribe button and the little bell so that you get notified when a new release comes out. All right, Yang. Everybody, Yang Chung tonight. <laughs> Yang is really, really a massive topic and it's really just a piece in the puzzle. It's not like a whole big thing that does all this stuff for you. It's just a piece. So what is Yang? It's so hard to summarize it, but here's the definition. Yang is a data modeling language. So we already got to take a step back. What is a data model? Well, think about it. If you ask for information from someone or something, maybe you're typing a CLI command and you type show, you expect the information to be presented to you in a format that you can understand. It has to be formatted in a specific way and structured or organized in a way that you can quickly find the info that you need. And a data model does just that. The data model says the structure of our data should follow this hierarchy. For instance, we may have a switch with 48 interface interfaces on it, right? So we might structure our data on those interfaces, such as we'll have a tier called interfaces. And then beneath that tier, we'll have each interface. And then within that interface, we'll have the name of the interface and the status of the interface and so on. So in order to find the status of say interface gig 038, we'll start with our interfaces tier and then work our way down into interface and then gig 038. Are you following that there's a certain structure that we have to have in the data? Now this is all well and good for us as humans. We can kind of like figure things out on our own for the most part, uh, but computers can't. Computers are literal. So if our computer is trying to connect to a network device and request data off of it, they have to agree on what the structure of that data is going to be so that our computer knows what to do with the data in the first place. Our computer needs to know how the data has been organized in order for it to make decisions or actions on that data. So let's take a look at what the IETF, the people who standardize Yang, have to say about this. Here's what it really looks like in action. We have interfaces, the interface name, then the name, the description, the type, enabled, link, so on and so forth. So if my computer is over here and I'm trying to connect into a network switch and I want my computer to maybe print a list of all of the interfaces whose enabled is set to false, my computer and the network device need to agree on what the structure of the data needs to look like when it gets sent back and forth. And here's the kicker. We're not talking about just XML or JSON. That is the data serialization. No, what we're really talking about here is the order or the hierarchy that the data needs to be sent in, whether it's XML or JSON. Where does this really come into play? This really comes into play when we talk about the industry standard network automation protocols, NetConf and RESTConf. If you're going for the Cisco DevNet exam, you're going to see NetConf and RESTConf particularly in the iOS XE section. iOS XE devices are programmable because they implement NetConf and RESTConf, whereas a lot of other network devices have their own APIs like Nexus. Now, that doesn't mean that Nexus devices don't have Yang data models. It's just that NetConf and RESTConf rely almost exclusively on structuring their data based on a Yang template. Now the actual Yang template itself is bonkers hard to explain and it's covered in detail in the Cisco DevNet course on CBT Nuggets, but I actually wanna show you how you can get the Yang template off of a network device and then parse it into a tree structure like the one that we have right here on the screen. Let's go. So I fired up VS Code. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new file real quick. We'll call this yangdemo.py for a pi file. And what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use the Cisco DevNet Sandbox and leverage an iOS XE device that they have running in the sandbox. I'm gonna use the NC client library so that we can connect using NetConf and grab the Yang data models off of the network device using NetConf. I'm also gonna use the XML eTree 
element tree library so that we have the ability to work with XML data and parse out just the raw info that we need, which is actually where the Yang data model is going to be stored. I'm going to alias it as ET or element tree so that it's a little bit easier to work with. Now for this next part, I'm just going to paste in the connectivity details. This is a little Python dictionary that has the info for the router that we're going to be connecting to. This has the host name, the netconf port that it's listening on is 10,000, username and password. That's really all we need to get connected. So with that being said, let's get connected. I'll use a with statement to call the with manager.connect method and I'll alias the connection as M. You may be wondering why am I choosing to do it this way? Because what happens when we use the with manager.connect as M, Python will build the connection, run all of the things that we need to run, and then automatically tear down the connection and relieve the pressure off of memory. It's just a cleaner way to handle connecting and disconnecting to network devices. But of course, we have to specify our connection parameters in the connect method. So let's go ahead and specify those. Lucky for me, the parameters that are used in the connect method all match up the key names here, host, port, username, and password. Uh, so all I have to do is specify that they equal those keys in the router dictionary. So I'll say host equals router host, port equals router port, username equals router username, password equals router. You know, let's clean up that screen a little bit there. Router password. And then lastly, this is going to be issuing a self-generated keys. So I'll say host key verify equals false. So that way we don't get any connectivity issues when we try to connect. Okay, so now the connection is in place. It's stored in a variable called M. Let's use that connection to grab a Yang data model called IETF IP. I'm going to call this variable IP schema and I will say with my M connection, I will run the method get schema and specify I want the IETF IP schema. What this is really doing is it is getting the Yang data model for how IP addresses are structured by the IETF. This is then being stored in an IP schema variable. So we're going to need to parse out the XML from that variable and then parse that XML to get the actual Yang data model. Here's how that looks. The first thing I'm going to do is turn this into an XML element and I'll store it in a variable called root because it will store in the root XML element. I'll use that ET alias alias mentioned from above and we'll use the from string method because that's exactly what's happening here is this is coming from string in the IP schema variable. So I'll say IP schema and use the XML value that came back as part of that IP schema. So by the time this method is done, it's going to grab the XML value from IP schema and use the from string method to store it as an actual root XML element. Now what I need to do is parse that XML element to find the actual Yang tree or the Yang template that's actually completely outlined and built by the IETF. So I'll store the results in a variable called Yang tree. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert that root object that we just got back for as an XML object into a list. The very first item in that list, we're going to use the index of zero is what contains the raw data that we're looking for. And we're going to grab the text values that come back from that. So at this point, the Yang tree variable should have the actual schema, the actual Yang data model schema for IETF IP. In order to explore the schema, we have to write this out to a file. So I'll create a file variable. I'll use the open command and I'll specify a file name of IETF IP dot Yang. It's going to have the Yang extension. I'm going to hit comma and make sure I also use the W parameter to specify that we're going to be writing to this file. I'll then use that variable to write the Yang tree to that file. And then I'll close the file. If I've done everything right, we should be able to debug this script and it will write the IETF IP Yang file to my local machine. Let's go. Okay, no errors. Let's go to the file browser, scroll to the bottom. Look at that, IETF IP Yang. If I click on it, look at that. That is a Yang data model. And all of these things that you're seeing here, all of these like leaf container modules, enums, types, all of this stuff is explained in the Cisco DevNet course on CBT Nuggets.
So that's great, but how do we get it into a tree-like view so that we could quickly see how the structure of IETF IP Yang works? Well, the first thing is I can see that it imports other Yang models too. In fact, three Yang models, IETF interfaces, IETF INET types, and IETF Yang types. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to copy and paste each one of these and run the script one more time for each of these to make sure I download those models too. So let's do that. I'll paste it in and get schema and paste it in right here before the dot yang. Then I'll run the script. Oop, we got to save it first. Run the script. And I'll repeat the same steps for the other two. Okay, so checking the file browser now, I see I have all of these Yang files here. And if we want to explore IETF IP Yang in the tree-like structure that we originally saw on that website, here's how we can do that. Using the git CLI, I will make sure I install a Python library called PyYang, P-Y-A-N-G. Let's give pip install PyYang. All right, already meets the command, and I'm in the folder that has those Yang data models. Let's give it an ls and you can see there they are right there. So the command to see IETF IP Yang in a tree-like structure, let me clear the screen, we'll say pyyang f for function tree and then specify the file name IETF IP dot Yang. There it is. There is the tree-like structure. I can see there's an IPv4 and an IPv6. I see there's status items like MTU, forwarding enabled, as well as the address info, the prefix length, even neighbor info, and IPv6 specific things like how it was auto configured. So what you need to imagine now is that my computer is going to be over here connecting to a network device and I may want to get IP address information from that network device. I'm going to say, hey, Mr. Switch, use the IETF IP model, that way I know exactly the structure of the data that's going to be coming back to me. And I can build my scripts to correctly parse out just say the IP address info if that's what I'm looking for. Whether it's NetConf or RESTConf, it doesn't really matter. NetConf is going to be using XML, but RESTConf can use XML or JSON. The key is that whatever serialization is being used, we know where to go to get the data that we need because it's been modeled ahead of time. So do you see what I mean? Yang is kind of a huge topic. I mean, we go a lot deeper on the Cisco DevNet course on CBT Nuggets because Yang determines how our data is supposed to be sent and received. It determines what the order or hierarchy of the data is. And what Yang really does is it provides a template or a way to write how the data is supposed to be modeled. Yang isn't just a DevNet topic. Yang is on the CCNP too understanding the benefits of Yang and how to even interpret a Yang data model is going to be a big deal, especially if you're diving into network automation. So yeah, summarizing that in a few minutes, pretty tough job. But we now know what data models are, what Yang specifically does for network devices. We now know how to pull off data models from a network device and parse it out in a tree-like structure using PyYang. So that's been Yang explained and explored. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. I'll see you in the next one.